Hello and welcome to my blog, Beauty and the Beaker, where we bring science and beauty together. Um, actually, it's not really a blog because it's on YouTube, so I guess the correct term is blog, but whatever. Um, I actually do have a blog, though. It's a written blog. Anyways, um, today's episode, if you could call it that, it's my third one, is using Latisse, or also known as Bitmata Prost make your eyelashes longer aging you so I was using this product and I found out that it actually decreases the fat around your eye it shrinks it like atrophies it and I've been using it for about three months to make my eyelashes longer right because I like to have long eyelashes and I was tired of putting on the fake ones so I thought, oh, that looks, that sounds really cool. This, this medication came out. I'm like, totally going to try it. And I was trying it. And I was like, okay, I'm approaching 40. So I thought maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe I'm, and maybe I am just getting old because I am approaching 40. But I was noticing like my eyes, especially when I would see pictures, they look like they were sinking in. So I was like, what's going on, man? This must be just like a side effect of getting older or something. And I kind of like noticed it like in the last year or so, and I've been using the product for maybe three or four months, So, and I had no idea, no idea that this was a side effect. And maybe that you do have an idea, maybe you knew this up front, it's actually in the literature, um, but it's not, it's not really, um, I don't know. I just didn't know about it. So anyways, I did some research and found out the truth, and this is what I have to share with you today. Um, so, I received a shock recently, um, I was using it, the product, the brand name Latisse. Um, it also goes by some other names. Um, it goes by Caraprost, Latanaprost, and one other one, which I'm going to read about. But the medication that I was using, and also the medication that's in Latisse, is called Bimataprost, or Bimataprost. And what it is, is it's a um, prostoglandin analog. So it is made to be like a prostaglandin and it actually prevents your eyelashes from moving on to the next phase of their life. So your eyelashes go in like phases, their growth, sleep, where they, you know, they go dormant and then they fall out and then they start their growth cycle again, but it keeps them in the growth cycle. So they never go into the, the phase where they fall out. So they keep growing longer. The thing I noticed about the medication though when I was using it is it didn't seem to make my eyelashes all that much thicker. Um, it did make them longer, but um, as far as making them super thick, it didn't really accomplish that like I wanted to anyways, so I wasn't that bummed, but I was kind of bummed that I may have decreased the fat in the orbital eye area and caused my eyes to sink in a little bit. That was kind of depressing news. So I have stopped using the product altogether, but um, like I said, the ingredient is bimataprost. It's a 0.03% solution, and it's a liquid. Um, it's a topical prostaglandin analog. And it was originally a medication to treat glaucoma, but um, users discovered that it made their eyelashes grow longer. Um, there's no, no shortage of testimonials verifying the fact that bimataprost does increase lash length, and some say also thickness and darkness. Um, but that was not what I was worried about after I read this study. So, what is less known by users, myself included, is that it can cause prostaglandin-associated periobitopathy. And periobitopathy basically means changes in the orbital eye area. In this case, it causes the, the fat cells to atrophy and shrink, and I'm going to explain why. So, in layman's terms, Bimataprost can cause the eyes to look tired and sunken or older. Researchers state that the prostaglandin causes prevention of orbital fibroblasts to differentiate into adipocytes and the prostaglandins downregulate fatty acid binding protein expression, which is important for the uptake of free fatty acids and triglyceride synthesis in adipocytes. So in layman's terms, the prostaglandin prevents cells in the tissue around the eye from becoming fat cells and also causes the existing fat cells to starve or shrink. Um, so that's what's going on. So you would see some sunken eyes. 
So this fat around your eye is the good kind of fat. You don't want to lose it. It's the, the fat that's supporting the eye and also it's also what makes up the eyelid and the under eye area. And it can worsen that or deepen it. So um, what does Latisse say? I was kind of curious about what the marketing said about the product. And I found some information that was kind of conflicting because Latisse has a video made by Allegrin floating around cyberspace of a doctor, a female doctor, explaining why you shouldn't worry about using Latisse. She says that since users place the solution on their upper lid, it's not going to affect their orbital fat. I don't know. I've used the product personally. I have used it. I put it on my eye. It's a liquid. Okay, you're putting a liquid near your eye. Think about it. Um, it does get in your eye. I don't care if you're trying to just put it on your lash. It, it got in my eye. Maybe that's why I'm kind of looking a little tired. I don't know. But And also, it has the ability to sink into the this, this skin here and absorb, and it can have an effect. So I don't buy it, and I'm not willing to risk risk it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. So I'm not convinced. And um, here a segment of the prescribing information on the Latisse website says there is a possible causal connection to Latisse and periorbital and lid changes asso associated with a deepening of the eyelid sulcus. So deepening of the eyelid sulcus. If that's what you're after, I just wanted longer lashes. I don't need my deepening of eyelid sulcus. I don't need them any deeper than they already are. So I don't, I don't want any of that business. But um, I looked at the eye wiki. Eye wiki. I as in E Y E, not I. Eye wiki. Anyways, and this eye wiki is compiled by ophthalmologists. And a quote from this eye wiki. It is still unknown what percentage of patients experience prostaglandin associated periorbitopathy, but it is safe to say that it is not a rare phenomenon. It has been claimed that once the clinician is looking for it, it can be noticed in nearly 100% of the time. And part of the problem is, is that some of the patients um, that they're seeing, they're using it for glaucoma and the patients are older, so it's just attributed to natural aging. Even in some of the people that are using it on their lashes, it's just attributed to natural aging. Because as you get older, you your lashes aren't as thick, so maybe people are using it to, to get thicker, longer, more youthful looking lashes, and so naturally those people would be a little bit older and they would just attribute this this sinking or or deepening to their age, like I did, because I, I thought it was just, oh, I'm just getting older, which I am, but anyways. Um, so let's keep moving along here. So many users attribute the change to age. There's a 2013 Korean study that concluded prostaglandin analogs display an inhibitory effect on the differentiation of adipocytes when the cells start to differentiate, especially in the late stage of differentiation. Thus, commercial topical prostaglandin analogs may decrease the fat of eyelids. Okay, so if you want to decrease the fat on your eyelids, you can use this, but also decreases the, the periorbital fat, which is behind and around, so, um, and thins your eyelids, and I don't want my eyelids any thinner. No, no thank you. Not the effect I'm going for. So, um, my verdict, it's just not worth the risk. I'm not gonna do it anymore. This medication is great if you have glaucoma and you need it, if it's medically necessary, Yes, by all means. Um, it's not dangerous, I don't think. It just affects your appearance negatively and probably not what you were intending when you wanted longer eyelashes. But um, so that's it. That's all I've got. Um, let me know what you think. If you like these types of videos, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any comments, let me know. Until next time, bye.